Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas, as day one of the 2021 Rogue Invitational continues here. The women are up next for their opening event. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I am Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. We saw the Ruck Pack create a little bit of havoc for the men in event number one. Just a little bit, and it's right there in the middle of that big Zeus rig. 10 total rope climbs with that 20 pound pack that the women will be wearing. We have the wheelbarrow pull, we have the over-unders, we have that wonderful hill climb that Rogue built at the back end as we make our way here. But as we saw for the men, we will see the same thing for the women, if not even more prominent is how they're gonna navigate those 10 total rope climbs from start to finish. Event one is presented by GORUCK. GORUCK believes our way of life in America depends on those who serve, and the more we support them, the stronger our foundation as a country will be. That's why GORUCK donates 1% of annual top line revenue to various nonprofit partners who support veterans and first responders. Carrie Pierce making her final appearance at a competition. She is retiring after the Rogue Invitational. And when it comes to upper body pulling, there might not be anybody better than her. No, and there's not a lot of bicep envy I have, but this is definitely <laughs> one of them. Carrie Pierce is an athlete that didn't get her chance at the games this year after having such a great performance last year. And this, like you said, Sean, is going to be her final hurrah from the individual scene. But the woman to her left in lane number nine, Sam Briggs, the ageless wonder, the engine from England. And by the way, is a bit of a bicep prowess herself when it comes to upper body endurance. So these are two acts that I think will fare very well in this first heat of women. Opening heat is underway, and looks like some athletes got a little bit of a jump there as they get to their wheelbarrow drag down the field. 175 pounds on that implement after this. It is to the log for 10 up and overs. And what we have here is just a buy-in to the first five rope climbs. Now, what I love here is that the only real difference in this event between the men and the women is the weight on the sled and the weight in the packs. But after that, it's all the same. They're doing the same number of rope climbs. It's the same height. So it's going to be really important to manage your work early because, as we said on the men's side, it's about grip fatigue and upper body endurance. So really getting to the ropes faster isn't necessarily that important at the beginning of this event, but how you navigate the rope climbs. And a lot of times is that these athletes are so fit and they'll feel so good, they'll start too fast. And it's one of those that you have to force yourself to take some breaks in between the climbs as not to blow up too soon in the first half of this event. Carolyn Prevo and Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Emma McQuaid were three of the first women to their first set of five row climbs, 20 pounds in that ruck pack that they are wearing. And we've talked about it a lot. That thing makes a huge difference when it comes to climbing a rope. Absolutely, and it has to do with the lean back. If you look at Carrie Pierce, what a lot of athletes will do is that they'll hold onto the rope, tuck their knees into their chest and lean back. But Carrie has a very short pull. Now, I can't really determine if that's good for her relative to what I would actually encourage other athletes to do. And with that layback, having 20 pounds behind you is going to put on way more stress. And a lot of it is going to take away from your confidence to lean back with straight arms. That might really throw some athletes for a loop. So the, the, the difference between the pack and, say, the vest, since it's so uneven, will throw a lot of athletes off if they're not used to training with this. There is Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Trains out of Spain. And she is on the lead pace here. At the 19 rep mark is when the women will leave the rope and move on to the sandbags that they have to move up Modder Hill, named for the crew chief here, the Rogue Equipment Team, Rick Modder. And they did a heck of a job of building that thing that you see looming in the back. 41 total repetitions in this event, and we are approaching the three minute mark of the first of these two heats. You look at the field, it's, it's really hard to determine 
just by looking at an athlete, who's going to do well at the rope climbs. A lot of times you would say, okay, the taller athletes, because they can go less pulls, but not with the pack. Or the gymnastics athlete, You're like, yes, of course, but not necessarily with the pack. And a lot of this has to do with how is your grip strength and grip endurance? How efficient are you at using your legs to save the arms for the pulls? And Turi Helgadotter will be the first woman done with her initial set of five rope climbs. Jacqueline Dahlstrom is behind her, and Carrie Pierce is also off the rope. Terry Helgadotter making her first trip up the hill, followed by Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Pardon me, that was not Carrie Pierce. I, that might be Emma Carey in lane eight. Well, Emma Carey, the youngster, on the lead pace there. The 17-year-old making her way down. As Turi Helgadotter and Jacqueline Dahlstrom are battling for the lead. Danielle Brandon is in the middle of your screen. She's reaching the top of the hill on her first sandbag carry. Next to her is Turi Helgadotter on her second. Brandon went up the hill fairly quickly, quicker than we've been seen anyone do, but Helgadotter still in the lead. And, you know, while Helgadotter is going into her last one, it's just one of the most underappreciated athletes, I think, in the field, just because of having a daughter last name. But, you know, she's been around this sport forever. I could date all the way back to nearly 2012 that she's been here, and she keeps returning. She keeps getting better. She just you know, got a couple daughters in the field that, tend to take away from the namesake as far as Turi's concerned. She and Jacqueline Dahlstrom continue to lead here. At the 22 rep mark, they will go back to the rope. And this is where we've seen some lead changes uh, with the men at least, as Helga Dotter is now done and heading back to the rope for five more rope climbs. All by herself right now in first place. You saw this on the men's side is that if you're off first, then the question remains is, How'd you get there? Did you get there the right way? Did you go a little bit too hard too soon? Usually the answer was yes <laughs> in the last two heats that we saw on the men, but I'm curious to see how Turi hangs on. And as you said earlier, Sean, what, the sneaky teenager that is Emma Carey. Emma Carey right now fighting with Jacqueline Dahlstrom for second place in this heat. Danielle Brandon is heading back to the rig. She's taking her time. She's at a walking pace right now. She spent a lot of energy on Modder Hill. Terry Helgadotter with four reps remaining on the rope, and here comes Carrie Pierce. We talk a lot about the difficulty of the pull. Are you using your legs appropriately? How much is that pack interfering with your grip strength? And one of the things that I feel like doesn't get trained is actually how to appropriately descend down the rope. You see a lot of athletes that do so well, but I think the thing we see here is that we say we, there's a black line about a third of the way up on the rope that the athletes have to control too. And what that's doing is maybe an unforeseen element that a lot of these athletes aren't prepared for because everybody does a good job of descending with no weight. And the fact that you have to stop right before the bottom is slowing them down to a point that's actually extending the intensity on the grip that these athletes probably didn't plan for. Turi Helgadotter is trying to stay ahead of Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Emma McQuaid. Also, Emma Carey on the lead pace as well, but Helgadotter about a half a rep ahead of them right now on the second and final set of five rope climbs. First of two heats for the women here, the first of seven events that they will face throughout this weekend. There goes Emma Carey, just 17 years old. And she has a bright future ahead of her in this sport. I like what Emma Carey is doing is she'll wrap her feet and then tuck her heels right underneath her hips. And that allows her to have a lot more aggressive of a pinch with the feet and utilization of the legs to help save the arms a little bit on the way up. See Helga Daughter doing the same thing, but a lot faster as a transition from grab to stand. One rope climb remains for Turi Helgadotter. And then she will move back to the log for her over-unders. 
We heard Pat Vellner talking about what the real hardest part was, and it was these last two when you're at your ultimate near failure of your grip, fatigue of the arms, your heart rate's jacked, and these last two are a lot of maybe reps. Maybe I should start now. Maybe it's too soon. Maybe I'll make it. And when it comes to that, it, it, it takes away from the confidence as you climb 20 feet in the air. Terry Helgadotter back to the log. 10 over unders for her. And then one final push of the wheelbarrow across the finish line. And she will look to lock up the win here in a heat number one. Emma Carey and Jacqueline Dahlstrom fighting for second. And it's Danielle Brandon and Emma McQuaid in a battle for third. At the 37 rep mark is when Helga Dotter will move back to that wheelbarrow loaded. With 180 pounds. Emma Carey is now done. Carey has moved by herself into second place as Turi Helgadon. Is in and Turi Helgadon will take heat number one of Goruck. This is a great, consistent performance from Turi from start to finish. She was able to keep the pace on her rope climbs relatively quick from the first five to the last five. I was very impressed with the pace she could sustain through those climbs. Emma Carey has now separated herself from Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Emma McQuaid, although the two of them are also on they're over-unders along with Kerry, but Kerry will be done first, and she will move back to the wheelbarrow for the final time for the 17-year-old with an impressive opening performance here in event number one. And she's looking at a second place finish here in the opening heat. A great time, right about the 10 and a half minute mark is when she'll be done in the cap of 30. We didn't see a lot of athletes on the men's side finish even around the 10 minute mark. Amazing job. Here comes Emma McQuaid. And McQuaid is across in third place in the heat. Now Jacqueline Dahlstrom will finish up. Sam Briggs, Carrie Pierce, and Danielle Brandon are on their over-unders. Pierce and Briggs in the middle of your screen. Briggs is in the red top. Pierce is in lane number 10. Briggs got they are neck little, and neck. Briggs got there a little earlier than Brandon, but Pierce is moving a bit quicker and Brandon is, and she actually caught up to Briggs. And now a race to the finish. This will be for fifth place in the heat. Sam Briggs just ahead of Carrie Pierce, who is swerving a little bit more. Briggs is done. She is in, and Carrie Pierce will come across in sixth place in heat number one. That's the one thing about the wheelbarrow, that if you've never pushed one of those, is that it, you have to have a very focused intensity when it comes to the wheelbarrow. It's not just one of those... You see a lot of athletes do this on an assault bike. They'll throw their body side to side, and it's actually a very linear movement. So you got to be careful, and that's what happened to Pierce, weaving in and out. Danielle Brandon is across. Leaves Emily Rolf, Ariel Lowen, and Carolyn Prevo still on the field. 30-minute time cap, so plenty of time here. That is Emily Rolf in lane number three. Her mother was a former Olympian for Canada. She threw the javelin. See what Rolf is doing is she'll, she'll wrap her feet, reach her hands up, and then flare her elbows out to the side. And what that's trying to do is relieve a little bit of tension from her grip. So it's not necessarily a technique to climb with, but it's a technique where she's trying to give her hands a break. So she's locking her feet in so much, barely holding on with her fingertips to try to give her arms a little bit of a rest as she gets up the rope. And Rolf making her first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. 
Been to the CrossFit Games twice as an individual. And that is Carolyn Prevo. Prevo continues to work on her rope climbs. Carolyn Prevo has won 11 national championships in four different <laughs> sports. I mean, we, we talked earlier in the beginning of the show this morning about Tia's athletic prowess across multiple sports, but it cannot be understated about Prevo's performance and, and elite level performance in those is to boot. Carolyn Prebo finishing just outside the top five last year at the Rogue Invitational, the event that was held virtually. We approach the 14 minute mark. Three athletes left on the field Carolyn Prebo, Ariel Lowen, and Emily Rolf. Looks like Prebo has two, Rolf has one more to go. Lowen one as well. And that last climb's the. the <laughs> The sketchiest one because you know you need to finish, but it's a long climb. Ariel Lowen, you saw her competing here in her home state. She's out of Midland, Texas. See Rolf still opting to try to give her hands a little bit of a break. And when she locks in, what she'll do is she'll drive her elbows closer together, and that's how you want to climb. So she flares her elbows out, tries to give her hands a break and then drives the elbows in to start her pull again. Rolf has made the touch and she is done. And she will head to the log for her over-unders. Ariel Lowen is also on the log. So Carolyn Prevo, the only woman left on the rope climb. 37 is the mark that both Rolf and Lowen need to hit before they return to the wheelbarrow one final time. The final rep for Rolf, she took a look down the field to see where Lowen is, and Rolf is going to be first in the wheelbarrow, but Lowen is right behind her. And it's gonna be Emily Rolf who wins this race. She will take eighth place in the heat. Ariel Lowen will lock up ninth. And it's Carolyn Prevo who still has one rope climb to go. We talked about those 11 national championships in four different sports, two of those came in ice hockey with the University of Wisconsin program. And this is the waiting game. Waiting for your grip to come back. When do you feel confident enough that you'll make the climb? And again, with this 20 pound pack, you have a dead stop. You, you don't get any jump. You don't get any momentum off the pad. And what usually takes two pulls is now taking upwards to five and maybe six. And you're doing that with grip that you can't trust with just effort. Prevo has made the touch and she is done. And she will have plenty of time to close out her event here. Remember, one heat remains. So her to there. Ten over-unders for Carolyn Prevo. And you're in the second heat looking on. You start thinking about just the map. How, what's the fastest time we see? We, we can look to the men for that. Turi pulled up right about a 9.30, or, or right under 10 minutes for her time. How long did it take her on the rope climbs? And then you start playing the math game. Okay, what do I need to do? Okay, shave off five seconds every rest break. Maybe that will get me ahead. Because again, it's, it's not necessarily fitness dependent when it comes to the climbs. The Carolyn Prevo is in, and with that, every woman Taylor's gets fine. in inside that 30 minute time cap. And it's Turi Helgadotter on the left of your screen. Like demolishes this event, nine minutes, 32 seconds her time. And she will wait around to see if that will 
last with one more heat to go. You <laughs> see the, the collection of the athletes talking about how sketchy the last touch is, is to remove one hand from the rope and then try to hit the shackle sitting on the Zeus rig. But Turi Helgadotter, we, the question is, if you're out first, can you finish first? And Turi Helgadotter, who was done with the sandbags well ahead of the rest of the field because of how fast she was on the first five climbs, wasted no time. Now, that doesn't mean to say she raced. She wasted no time. She had the perfect pacing. She had good, smooth climbs locking in her feet being very efficient with her movement. That is going to be the key to being successful in this event. Can you utilize your feet and your technique and maximize your grip strength and stamina to get through the fa as fast of the climbs as you can? Because there's a big difference when this particular movement between you and other people's ability. It's not just based off effort. Let's go down to the field where Kiki Dixon is with Terry Helgedown. Terry, this event comes all down to those weighted rope climbs. What was your approach to pacing on those? Uh, so after watching the men's heats before, uh, I decided to take a little bit, like one more shake than I wanted to in the first five, and then just see how I feel on the way back. And luckily my grip didn't die, so I survived. You certainly did survive. Last year you were part of the Invitational online. How big of a difference is it from that to this? Uh, well, this is obviously a lot more fun. <laughs> um, online, it was, it was almost like you were training alone. Nobody was up allowed to cheer for you or anything, and no music. So this is a whole another experience. I like it a lot. <laughs> Us too. We're happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Terry Helgadotter with the time to beat at 9 minutes 32 seconds with one heat remaining. Emma Carey, second place at 10.28. And then it's Emma McQuaid followed by Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Samantha Briggs rounding out the top five. Carey Pierce just two seconds back of Briggs. Take a quick break. When we come back, heat number two for the women of Go Rock here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Opening day of the 2021 Rogue Invitational continues here from Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. Thank you for staying with us today, everybody. I am Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. The first heat for the women in their opening event has just taken place, and it's Turi Helgadotter who has the top time as we have one heat remaining in Go Ruck. And the word of the day is rope climbs. Well, it's two <laughs> words, but you guys know what I'm saying. If you've been watching along with both the men and the women as far as heat one, it is about those rope climbs in the middle. However, we do have an out and back chipper. It starts with that wheel barrel you see in the front of your screens. We'll go to Zeus, 10 over unders, but the 10 total climbs, five in the front half, five on the back half of those 16 foot weighted climbs with that 20 pound go rug. We have that nice hill that Rogue made just for this event, but it's gonna come down to the rope on Zeus. And Turi Helgadotter did what we thought other athletes should do is watch the previous heats, adapt the plan to your skill set, and then use that on the competition field. And she has the time to be coming into the second heat. Catherine Davis out of the former two-time fittest woman on earth taking the field. Ten women in the second and final heat. Two women to watch are right in the middle of the field, starting with Laura Horvath, who comes in with some momentum after finishing second at the CrossFit Games. And better momentum than she did the first time she finished second at the CrossFit Games, which was in 2018. And Laura Horvath is an athlete that excels in events like this, and more so with events that require massive amounts of grip, upper body strength. We know her Achilles heel has always been a handstand push-up, but that doesn't mean she has a strong upper body. She has a wonderful pulling athlete, and she has that grip strength from her background 
as a rock climber. And then you have the greatest athlete to ever grace the competition floor, and that is Tia Toomey, who won the Go Ruck in the 2019 Rogue Invitational. So first, second from the games, first place coming to defend her title from last year's Rogue Invitational. I think we're in for quite a show between these two athletes all weekend long. All these women will be trying to chase down Turi Helgadotter, who put up a time of 9 minutes 32 seconds in the first of these two heats. Second and final heat underway, and we begin with that wheelbarrow pull down the field. 180 pounds on that apparatus, and it is Laura Horbath who is out front early, right in the middle of your screen. Sean, you said earlier that she's having a great training offseason since coming off the games, and that's not what she had two years ago after the 18 games, where she just couldn't seem to find a rhythm. She had some injuries, but Laura Horvath had one of the best performances ever at the cross against for an in individual. Unfortunately, she's doing it at a time where we have the greatest athlete competing in the sport, and that is Tia Claire Toomey. Tia Toomey methodically working her way through these over-unders. Five rope climbs after this, 41 total repetitions. You can see that in the black box on the left side in our scoring readout. And this is the pace you want to see to start things off. Tia Toomey so chill. So relaxed. They all got there within five seconds of each other. Now, this is where I want to see athletes' technique coming in. You'll see it change as they get tired, but you actually want a very straight arm position as you tuck those knees to your chest. And I feel like Laura Horvath does a very good job of that because that's very reminiscent of what rope climbing, or not rope climbing, rock climbing is. is the, the misconception is you keep your arms close to your body and you don't overextend. And that's actually quite the opposite of what you're supposed to do. And Horvath is doing that. Watch, she'll reach up, completely straighten her arms and let her legs tuck up and then reach up again. So she's never in a contracted, compromised position when it comes to the climb. At the 19 rep mark, the athletes will move on to the sandbags that they have to carry up to the top of the hill that Rogue has constructed here in center field. Laura Horvath is through 17 of her 41 reps. Annie Thorostoner and Gabriella Magala are there as well as you take a look at Tia Toomey. Toomey had a little bit of a misstep or a mistag on her last climb. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that's detrimental, but you have enough of those where it adds an extra climb, an extra five seconds to the climb. It does add up if you can't clean that up. Now, I'm pretty sure she will because then you realize, okay, on my next climb, I have to reach a little bit higher on my second to last pull to make sure I get those four inches I need for the final one. Haley Evans is also on the lead pace as Laura Horvath is now done with her first set of five, and she will be the first woman to move on to the sandbags. Time to beat belongs to Turi Helgadotter. Nine minutes, 32 seconds for her unofficially. And Turi was off the rope at 3.25 when she set her time. Horvath is over 40 seconds ahead of that pace. And I was like, okay, where is Horvath going to give up some ground? Nowhere. There's nothing in this event that's bad for Laura Horvath. In fact, as we work our way through this, now that we're on the Sandbag Hill, this is actually very good for her because if you look at the battleground in 2018 where she won, it had things like a weighted run. It was a vest. It had rope climbs and dummy carries, and she destroyed that event. So unless Laura miss paces her rope climbs, I really don't see anyone in this field that's going to take her. Four women are on the sandbags, make it five women. Laura Horvath is in the lead. Tia Toomey and Annie Thoros' daughter are fighting for second. Haley Adams is on the hill as well, and Gabriella Magala. Amanda Barnhart just getting there on the bottom left of your screen. You just saw the shadow. You can see her now on the left side. She just hoisted her bag up, and that's her first ascent up the hill as Laura Horvath is on her third and final bag. 
this really is a place where you can push the pace a little bit. And yes, it's going to jack up your heart rate and get you out of breath a little bit. But since you have to rest so much on the rope climbs, you can actually afford a little bit more intensity than you may think, because it is just going to tax your legs and your lungs to a certain extent. But you will get that back on the rope climbs. Laura Horvath is done. Annie Thor's daughter is done. And Tia Toomey is finished as well. So the three of them working their way back to Zeus for five more rope climbs. 9.32 unofficially the time to beat, and they are all shaking out those arms <laughs> on the way back. As they should, because this is where the event lies. It's the second five rope climbs. Your overall le leader, Turi Helgadotter, she got back to the ropes at about 5.33. So again, these athletes are still maintaining about a 30 or 40 second lead on the time to beat. But now we have a race on the rope, and unfortunately, this all comes down to how well you can pace out your breaks. There's only so much energy or effort you can put in to where you set yourself up for a big mistake one, as you get towards that fifth climb. Gabriella Magala is also onto the rope for the final time. She is the athlete um, towards the bottom, was on the bottom of your screen. She just passed out of view. Haley Adams is back as well. So now five women on their final set of rope climbs. Mal O'Brien is working her way back to Zeus, as is Christy Aramo O'Connell, Annie Thorsutter, Tia Toomey, and Laura Horvath, all through 24 of the 41 total repetitions at the 27 rep mark is when they will move back to the log for their over-unders. I think Tia just overtook Laura Horvath as she got up for her third climb before with Annie on the right, so Horvath had a big break after the second climb, and Tia took advantage of that. Tia Toomey is now your new leader in this heat, 9.32. That is the unofficial time to beat, belongs to Turi Helgadotter. Six minutes and 19 seconds and counting have gone by in this second and final heat of this opening event here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Lead changes again with Annie Thorstadter just to the right in lane number four, middle of your screen. She's got up ahead of Tia Toomey. Thoris' daughter is now through four of her second five rope climbs. Tia Toomey sits in second place, and it's Laura Horvath in third. You start to think about maybe Horvath's pace in the first five was just a little too quick, because a lot of times you don't feel bad. She probably felt great the whole time, and it doesn't hit you until about two reps later. Horvath is now through her fourth rope climb, and there goes Annie Thoris' daughter in the black pants with a white stripe on the side. Tia Toomey right next to her, so it looks like the two of them will move to the log at about the same time, but Thoris' daughter now starting to open up a bit of a lean on Toomey as Toomey took a little break there in the middle of her final ascent, and now 10 over-unders for Annie Thoris daughter. Now you gotta go. You're not gonna fail the wheelbarrow, but you can lose time on the logs. Annie Thoris daughter making her second appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. Her last was in 2019 when she finished in third place overall. And Tia Toomey has joined her on the log. And now Laura Horvath is done with her rope climbs and she is moving on to the log. She is back now in fifth place as both Gabriella Magala and Haley Adams have moved ahead of her. Thoris Daughter is done, now to the wheelbarrow. One final push to the finish line, and Annie Thoris Daughter looking to lock up an event win here. And Annie Thoris Daughter continues her incredible year with an event win to start her 2021 Rogue Invitational. Gabriella Magala has passed Tia Toomey. Magala looking to lock up second place. She is in, and now Tia Toomey will take third. She will earn 90 points. Haley Adams is on the wheelbarrow, looking to come in in fourth place as Turi Helgadotter now sits in fifth place in the event. She had the top time in the opening heat. Adams is across. Here comes Laura Horvath. And Laura Horvath, as we said, is like, I thought she wasn't going to yield anything to anybody, but I think the biggest battle was the pace that she had on her first five climbs, and that ended up blowing her up on the second five. Fifth place in the heat will be good enough for fifth place 
in the event for Laura Horvath, who had the lead for a good portion of that event, but surrendered it on the rope climbs as we take a look at Mal O'Brien, who is right now your leader on the field. 17-year-old Phenom making her first ever appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. And now O'Brien back to the wheelbarrow. Mal O'Brien is done. And she will take sixth place in this heat. 9.52.33 seconds. Four athletes left on the competition floor. Kristen Holta, Chrissy Aramo O'Connell, Amanda Barnhart, and Katrin David's daughter. And David's daughter is on the right side of your screen, stretching out. She just left the view, but she is still on her rope climbs. It's honestly not that much of a surprise to see David's daughter in that position. I mean, if you know her history with rope climbs, that was more legless that kept her out of the games in 2014, but created the competitor that we have now from that. But it's still, Katrin David's daughter's, one of her biggest weaknesses is upper body pulling endurance. Everybody knows that. Now, if this were inverted on her hands, completely different story. Almost a tale of two athletes between her and Laura Horvath. Christy Aramo O'Connell just ahead of Kristen Holta on the wheelbarrow. Aramo O'Connell is going to hang on to that lead, and she will cross to finish in seventh place. Kristen Holta right behind her takes eighth. Amanda Barnhart and Katrin David's daughter left on the floor. Two athletes that have very similar weaknesses in upper body pulling endurance. You see that with high volume muscle ups you see that a lot with you know high volume rope climbs and they're they're good at rope climbs and even legless but as we said before the pack changes the rope and the other thing that changes it is that pad that pad to the left we said deadens your ability to jump to the rope and the pack only makes it less or i say more impactful of your ability not to be able to do something like that. Catherine Davis' daughter closing out her event here in her third appearance at the Rogue Invitational. Her best finish was fourth in 2019, the event that was held in Columbus, Ohio. And now Amanda Barnhart will be the final woman across the finish line as all 10 women in this heat get in well inside that 30-minute time gap. Amanda Barnhart, 11.46.81 seconds to close things out. But it's Annie Thoris' daughter. Eight minutes, 14.91 seconds, her second career event win at the Rogue Invitational. And a full body competition outfit, I feel like that's what I'm looking at right now, which is about perfect if you're actually thinking about a ruck and rope climbs. That's the perfect <laughs> outfit for something like this. But the question was, where did Annie Thor's daughter come from? She was sitting in about third place in it. Watch her rope climb technique. Annie is one of the only people to do this. She does the natural foot grab about right through the middle, but then she results to a very old school technique is where she would used to use a Spanish climb. You didn't see it on that clip, but the, the old one where you would wrap the rope around your leg almost in a spiral. And what that allows her to do is have a much bigger grab with her legs on the rope. And Annie is so old school that she's probably the only athlete to use that technique ever. The, the side climb that you saw that Annie did is for speed. The Spanish wrap is for strength. And Annie leaned on her past competition days, and that's what's got her the win. Annie Thoris' daughter, 100 points, and she is with Kiki Dixon. Annie, there was a bit of a battle going over at the rope climbs, but you had the winning strategy and technique. What was it? Well, I was trying to pace myself on the way out. We're seeing on the male side, like, you could go hard, uh, but it was one on the second set of rope climbs. And even on the way back on the rope climbs, I'm like, I feel surprisingly good. Maybe I should go faster. And then as soon as I finish the third one, I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> My grip might be failing right now. Um, and then I saw the three of us all have one rope climb left. And I don't know, I'm here to take chances. So I just took a chance, and thankfully it paid off. <laughs> Speaking of chances, this onesie, as a fellow fan of a onesie, what was the inspiration behind it? Well, actually, like, I have burns since 2015 when I got my heat stroke. I got, like, severe burns in my back, and I still have the scars from it. So I 
had this onesie when I was pregnant, and it was perfect throughout my pregnancy. And then I was like, oh, we have the rack. I am going to wear this so I don't get burns on my back. So that's the reason why. <laughs> I like it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Annie Thoris daughter, her second career event win here at the Rogue Invitational. A fan favorite, and she takes the time to acknowledge the crowd and almost forgot to bring her rucksack with her. <laughs> Little consolation prize for a first place finish. Good crowd on hand here at Dell Diamond in the opening day of the 2021 Rogue Invitational. Take a look at the top five finishers from that last heat are unofficially the top five in this event. Annie Thorosauter, 814.91 seconds. Again, the top five in the final heat, the top five uh, in the event. Gabriella Magala, 832.81 seconds. And it's Tia Toomey who finishes third, followed by Haley Adams and then Laura Horbath. A lot more action to come today. We're going to take a quick break, head over to the Rogue Iron Game desk and Pat Sherwood and company, but stick around as the CrossFit action will continue. If you miss watching guys like Rich Froning and Chris Spieler and women like Annie Sakamoto and Julie Fouché and Tanya Wagner will stick around because they're coming up next. The legends take the field when we return to action here at the 2021 Rogue Invitational.